How's it going my friends and welcome back to the channel. So in this series we are looking at uh, Italieri's um, Triumph motorbike. Uh, it's basically a uh, dispatch motorbike and it's going to be interesting. <laughs> I've not really had all that much luck um, with uh, Italieri uh, stuff. I've generally just avoided them uh, pretty much altogether because I've never found the fits really any good. But I've been looking at this for, for some time and you know, I'm not a big fan of motorbikes, um, but I like the old ones, uh, the old school type ones. Um, they're really nice as what I would class as a proper motorbike. I'm sure probably some of you will disagree, but I don't care. This is a proper motorbike. This is what a motorbike should look like. <laughs> and um, yeah, so it's supposed to be um, like an army uh, dispatch uh, riders. Uh, motorbike um, but as always I've gone for the RF option <laughs> it's not an option within the kit I've basically done this off my own back um, fortunately I got um, I kept some old decals with RF on and some small uh, roundels um, so I'll be using those to, to make it into uh, an RF bike might not be completely accurate I've gone through some um, reference photos of RF ones and I've generally got the markings that are on it. I mean, they don't really have that many on them anyway, um, but I think I've got it fairly close. Um, so, yeah. So let's see um, how this goes together. Um, and yeah, I'll, uh, I'll catch you the side of the video. Right, so there's not really much to really say uh, about the kit. Um, it's a nice kit, but it's fraught with annoying bits and pieces so as start as you can see here there's a couple of um ejector pin marks that stick out and you know absolute pain in the backside to try and clean without destroying those uh, bolt details uh, but i managed to sort of uh, sort of chisel them away and smoothen them out and just to clean it all up using a bit of uh, tummy extra thin to try and uh, you know smooth it all out but to be fair, I mean, it is, it's a straightforward kit. It is nicely detailed, but like I said, there's little issues, stuff like those ejector pins. Um, there's a lot of really awkward um, seam lines to get rid of. The, the molding itself is what I'd like to say slightly off. Um, there's quite a lot of uh, steps in there, um, particularly around the bike frame um, itself. So takes quite a lot of time uh, with this kit um, with a lot of uh, cleaning up and you know um, sort of adjusting um, if you like um, the fit itself is okay um, the engine probably was the best bit out of all of it uh, to fit uh, together the uh, fuel tank itself wasn't too bad uh, but trying to get two thin halves together was a little bit difficult so as you can see I've used a bit of white tack just to um, you know thicken it out so I've got, I've got somewhere to sort of play and, and hold it because every time I tried you know doing it just by hand it just wouldn't stick very well so I taped it up to get uh, together just to, to make it a lot easier then I had to try and get rid of that seam line as well which was um, took quite a bit of time but with um, I used a little bit of uh, plaster by uh, Vallejo um, to sort of try and uh, just fill in the gap really and th there was just quite a lot of sanding basically um, and there was also a couple of sink marks in the top and bottom part of the tank. So from here on out um, there's not really there's not really much to say about it um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll just let it play and just show, show you um, basically how everything else went together
so here was probably one of the only couple of sort of modifications if you like uh, I made this bit of tubing doesn't quite actually fit to where it's supposed to so what I did was is I cut that little bit of tube off keeping the connector part and I drilled a small shallow hole um, in that connector part and I fixed a wee bit of um, soldering wire because it's about the right length and it's it's a lot better for you know sort of flexibility and um, you know you can make it also look a bit more um, sort of like a, a natural bit of piping uh, as well with a bit of kinks and creases in so I kind of roughly matched that to um, the original uh, piping obviously giving it a little bit of uh, extra length in uh, cut it all down super glued it into place and yeah uh, that was probably one of, the only, uh, one of two or three sort of small modifications uh, I had to sort of make um, but you'll see the one uh, a little bit later on So this was the only other modification uh, I made. This is the back of the front mudguard and there's a massive step in it and I'll be honest with you, I couldn't be bothered to clean it out. So <laughs> I did exactly the same thing as I did with the piping. I, I cut out the sort of connecting parts uh, I needed. Again, drilled a small hole um, in the end. This time we used uh, some copper wiring because it was going to be a bit more uh, rigid and just sort of used the original part, bent it into sort of, you know, the right shape and um, the right length. Did have to give it a little bit more extra length on it because it wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't quite the same sort of shape. Um, so it needed a little bit more um, extra length because it is technically a little bit smaller than the original part. Um, but other than that, that was probably the only other sort of modification I made. As you can see, I just, just super glued those uh, into place and they're ready to go on. I've decided to try and make the uh, seat a little bit more um, believable and a little bit less fat, flat. Uh, so I've used um, some PVA glue watered down about roughly around about 50-50. And I've put some of that down first and then on top of of uh, placed a bit of uh, tissue paper so you can see I've cut out a few um, little sections there to help it uh, sort of mold uh, around the uh, seat also dropping it at the same time um, <laughs> but uh, yeah so with a bit of luck this will give us a bit more uh, texture even if there's a couple of ripples in there that will be even better so I want to paint in the actual uh, bike itself. I've decided to try a uh, like a what they call a zenith uh, highlight, which is basically misting uh, like a white or a light grey uh, over the top of a black primer over the areas that are going to basically get hit by light. So basically everything um, straight across the top of the model. And the point of this, hopefully, is to to make a little bit of uh, variation. Uh, to the paint um, you know and give us a sort of like a kind of like a false shading whether this will actually work or not is another matter every time I've tried doing stuff like this it hasn't really particularly worked but we'll give it a go anyway so for the base coat what I'm using is uh, Amos uh, French Blue uh, I added a little bit of uh, black into that to sort of make it a little bit darker and a bit more of a um, an RF grey blue colour and basically just just spray the entire model uh, with this colour 
and uh, with a bit of luck, luck this uh, Zenith Hololight will work. So you can't quite tell within this light, but um, it's kind of worked. It's something I probably need to work on uh, a little bit more, but you know, it, it looks all right. So next we move on to uh, scratch work and I've done the, uh, started with the sponge technique. So I've got a little sponge, uh, roughed it up a little bit so it's not too uniform. Dipped it in um, the paint. Now I've used up strength, straight up French blue uh, for this because it's obviously a little bit lighter and you know sponge it off onto uh, uh, some tissue paper got rid of most of that so it just leaves a light impression and then uh, I've sort of joined up some of the dots a little bit and added a few um, fresh scratches in there uh, with the paintbrush So of course the point of this is to give a sort of light scratched effect so it hasn't quite gone through um, to the bare um, you know, metal um, of the uh, tank which is what I'm going to do uh, next. So I kind of did uh, the same thing again with the sponge. Uh, I used uh, MIG steel for this because I actually find to prefer this as sort of like a scratch metal. Uh, work once you've put a, a matte varnish over it, um, it tones it right down and looks, you know, really quite nice and quite realistic. Of course, as well, we're going over um, some of the, the light scratches again, um, also popping a few um, sort of new scratches that have gone pretty much straight down to the metal work. So there we go, that scratch work is coming on uh, quite nicely and I think it's probably one of my new preferred uh, sort of techniques. Um, normally I've just done straight up just scratch metal uh, but I think, you know, sort of highlighting it before with a lighter paint tone um, gives a really, really nice effect and again putting that um, deeper sort of scratch work over the top is, um, is also really nice and it's a really nice um, enjoyable um, sort of technique to do. Very relaxing. So of course to keep this all in keeping, I obviously did the same uh, technique uh, across uh, the rest of the bike just to keep it all nicely tied in and you know the same effect runs throughout. Then next was the very fiddly part of uh, putting all the uh, sort of pipe work in, so like brake lines and um, you know throttles and, and whatever. Um, so this was quite um, difficult to try and remember where everything went and all the hose connectors were um, very fiddly and of course trying to you know push it up through the sort of main spokes of the bike as well to keep it all neat and tidy and all it was was just basically super glued into place to make sure uh, the fit stayed. Then all that was left to do was to add the last little sort of uh, details which were the springs and um, you've got two springs underneath the seat and one at the front of the bike and then that's it that's it's uh, all done and painted and ready for weathering so there we go um that's the build part done um it's not I know it's not the most exciting of videos, I do apologise for that. Um, 
it's one of the things I struggle with particularly a lot of vehicles and trying to make them you know interesting or well, the videos interesting as to say at least anyway um so yeah so yeah as I've kind of expected wasn't a brilliant fit um there was quite a lot of step misalignments in there as you seen when I redid the um the bracket for the back of the uh, front mud guard um yeah it, it hasn't gone together particularly well um so what I'm hoping within the next episode uh, the weathering can hide all my mistakes, uh, which is usually the case. Uh, fortunately, it's like I like to think um, weathering is kind of like my expertise. Um, maybe been a little bit big headed there, but <laughs> yeah, it, it's something I enjoy doing more. So I'll put, probably put a lot more effort into uh, doing the weathering and, and try and make it look kind of like you know as realistic as possible. So um, yeah, so that'll be in the next um, episode. So you know, I hope you can uh, join me for that. If you're new around here and if you enjoyed uh, the video, um, obviously I've got other videos, you can check them out. Uh, but please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Um, put the bell notifications on, of course that will tell you when the next uh, video is out. And all that's left to say again is thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, do hope you've enjoyed and as always, I'll catch you again soon.